Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jamie Royston-Smith and I'm Business Development Manager and Subject Matter Expert at TaxCalc. My role involves helping our existing accountant partners expand their knowledge and use of the TaxCalc ecosystem and fly the flag for all things TaxCalc in the accounting in industry. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to our HMRC update webinar today. I hope you're all doing well. Today we are raising awareness of an HMRC announcement that was made to software developers in October, which will affect the submission options for VAT returns come April 21, not too far away now, so we'll get on to that in just a moment. As part of HMRC's ongoing engagement with software developers and their end customers, that's you, we're pleased to be joined by Lenny Barry, MTD External Stakeholder at HMRC. Uh, Lenny, a very warm welcome to you. Would you like to say hi and introduce yourself in your role? Thanks very much, Jimmy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name's Lenny Barry. I work in the customer readiness and external stakeholder team in the MTD program. Uh, I think you may have been expecting my colleague, uh, Werner Gelvier. Uh, she is unavailable this week, unfortunately, but I uh, will do my very best to step into her uh, shoes and cover as much as we possibly can. Um, I'll, I'll preempt by saying if I don't know the answer to something, uh, I'll be honest enough to tell you, but I will do my very best to find out subsequently and get back to you. Uh, all we want to do is to work with you uh, so that you and your customers have the smoothest journey uh, on MTD as is possible. Thanks very much. Right. Thanks, Lenny. Yeah, we do really appreciate the um, the effort to engage with us and, and our partners more. Uh, and particularly for stepping in at short notice. So thank you very much. Great, well, um, I guess to cover off what TaxCalc's role is in the webinar today, uh, well, as, as many of you know, you may be customers, we are a supplier to around about 9,000 accountancy partners. So we do feel obliged and responsible for making sure that every single practitioner is equipped with the latest information to make sure you're well aware of any changes before they happen. Um, MTD is still pressing ahead and a steady stream of announcements are being made and well, given the year that accountants have had this year fighting to keep their clients' businesses afloat, you, you would be completely forgiven for uh, perhaps not having read up on the latest roadmap and timescales. So we thought it would be uh, useful to set up the webinar today, particularly with this announcement, just to make sure that it doesn't go under the radar because it will affect um, a handful uh, of VAT clients. Um, you know, in April 21. So in some respects, this is a service level update. So if you're an existing customer using our VAT filer, um, there will be some changes um, uh, coming uh, for any non-MTD VAT, VAT clients. And, and yet again, more to follow on that in just a moment. So a little bit about today's agenda and format and, and housekeeping and all of that. So um, Lenny will be providing an update for us uh, before we discuss what agents and practitioners can do to prepare their clients and the merits of different approaches you can potentially take. Uh, we want this to be as interactive as possible. So we have uh, a couple of questions and polls we'd like to submit to the audience. And please, so please do respond to the polls as they go live. And at the end of the presentation, you'll have a chance to see TaxCalc's MTD VAT filer in action, which is one of the potential viable options going forwards. Uh, and after that, we will open up the floor to Q&A. So please do stick around for the question and answer section. Um, so yeah, Lenny and myself and my colleague, Ben Handley, who you can also see uh, in the meeting, uh, one of the product specialists uh, from the compliance team is, is on standby to help answer your questions as well. So if you get a question, feel free to pop it into the question and answers box uh, in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll get onto that um, either during the presentation or at the end when we've got the dedicated time for Q&A. Great, so uh, to kick off, we're going to launch our first poll. So we'd like to ask the audience a question today. Do you currently file VAT returns for any non-MTD clients? I'm launching the poll now. We'd appreciate your answers. So you've got uh, a few different options there on screen. Yes, I currently submit non-MTD VAT client returns via the government gateway on HMRC. Yes, via TaxCalc or other commercial software. And no, I have no non-MTD VAT clients, so it, it might not apply to you. But the question for the audience today is, 
do you currently file VAT returns for any non-MTD clients? So that could be there typically uh, under the 85,000 threshold and therefore voluntarily registered for, for whatever reason. So please submit your answer, just gonna leave it open for 10 more seconds. Getting the answers coming through now, thank you very much. Okay, and we'll close the poll there. I think the numbers have settled. Let me share the results with you this morning. So you can see a uh, vast majority there are being submitted through the government gateway still. So 61% of respondents saying that they're still submitting those non-MTD VAT returns via the government gateway. 20% uh, using commercial software such as TaxCalc or perhaps a cloud accounting package. Uh, and another 20% there, um, no MTD VAT clients. So thank you for your responses. We've got a couple, uh, another poll later on, so we will launch that to you uh, in a moment. Um, but for now, uh, what I'm going to do is hand over to Lenny to take us through the MTD update. Fab. Thanks very much, Jamie. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go through a little bit of history. Not much. I'm, I'm sure you all uh, know about MTD by now. Uh, and then uh, we'll cover a little bit of what we have going forward just to make sure we're aware of what's coming up. Uh, and of course, um, it's a very, very busy year uh, for HMRC and for yourselves, given the uh, dramatic uh, impact of COVID, uh, the COVID pandemic on businesses throughout the UK. Um, HMRC um, had to work very, very quickly uh, to respond to the Chancellor's requests to get various packages in place to support businesses. Uh, and uh, we were able to use MTD as a, a tool to help us do that, uh, which enabled us to get packages out a lot quicker um, than perhaps would have been uh, under the old system. Uh, but again, we are very conscious that the full impact of COVID uh, probably hasn't been seen yet. It's only when we try to restart the economy and get businesses back up and running uh, will we actually see what the impact may be. So Making Tax Digital is the key government initiative to transform and digitise the tax administration system uh, to create a modern and digital service for our customers. It aims to make the tax administration system more effective, more efficient, and easier for businesses to get their tax right first time. MTD will also be a central component to the tax administration strategy for the next decade. You may be aware that the government announced in the summer that we were looking to create this 10-year strategy, uh, which will involve a lot more of automated processing, a lot of simplification, making things easier uh, for, for ourselves and for our customers uh, to make that tax system uh, more user-friendly and easier to operate. Making Tax Digital is part of our long-term vision. Um, we have uh, the vision of all our taxes, all our heads of duty uh, will be managed through a single digital account uh, and they'll all have similar effortless processes in time. So MTD brings change <clears throat> and requires taxpayers to maintain the, the records digitally and to file digital quarterly updates of summary information for income tax self-assessment uh, and to file their VAT returns digitally through MTD compatible software to HMRC. Uh, as a little bit of <clears throat> uh, confidence to us, uh, we can show you some figures uh, to uh, back up the progress that MTD VAT has made. Um, Jamie, am I moving the slides or you by any chance? No? Okay. There you go, top man. Um, so we have had uh, over 1.45 million signups for MTD for VAT. Uh, over 86% of businesses uh, mandated to join MTD for VAT 
are now signed up to the MTD service. Uh, interestingly, 30% of non-mandated businesses have signed up to submit MTD uh, VAT returns voluntarily. Over 7 million VAT returns have now been successfully submitted through the MTD service, bringing in billions of pounds uh, as we would expect. And also we've been able to repay billions of pounds to our repayment customers. There is a wide variety of MTD software products on offer for businesses. Um, currently there are over 500 on the software choices pages on gov.uk. Businesses can use bridging software products and continue to use spreadsheets or older uh, desktop software products to meet their MTD requirements. And existing subscribe users of over 250 products have been upgraded to MTD for free by their software uh, company uh, where they have been using the latest version of their product. Now, it's a, a busy phase. Um, we would say, maybe we're biased, but we would say that MTD for VAT above 85,000 has been deployed quite successfully. It's done what it was supposed to do in terms of processing. We've proven uh, it can be received, it can be processed, and it can be delivered. 86.6%. Uh, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, it's not 100% yet. So if you have uh, clients who are above taxable turnover of 85,000, we will have written to them to say, we believe that you should be submitting by making tax digital. Please let us know uh, why not. Uh, some people have come back and said that they are uh, exempt. Um, that's fine. Uh, we have gone through that process with them and it's been signed off. We also get people coming back saying, oh, but we, we have grants which aren't taxable turnover. Our taxable turnover is actually below 85 uh, and that's fine. We can verify that, but we still probably have a core of businesses who are not quite willing to engage with us and meet their obligations. Now, we have written to them uh, several times this year. Uh, each time we've encouraged and supported, offered help. Uh, but at some point, I have to be honest, at some point we will have to draw a metaphorical line and say, well, we've asked you three or four times now. Uh, we've offered you all the help and support that we can. Uh, but if you're not prepared to meet your obligations, then we may have to. Uh, encourage them slightly more firmly by uh, tra more traditional methods, which uh, possibly would be penalty. So if you do have any uh, over 85,000 uh, taxable turnover customers who are not on MTD, then please uh, share that message with them. I know it sounds uh, a bit strange, but issuing penalties is the last thing we actually want to do. It doesn't really solve the problem. Uh, it's actually uh, inefficient for us. Uh, the penalties initially are, are fairly small. Uh, they are very difficult to chase uh, and they cost more to process. Uh, we simply want businesses to work with us to meet uh, their obligations and hopefully uh, we can get them all on track within the next few months. Uh, and if we can then go to the next slide then, Jimmy, uh, we can see um, a little roadmap for uh, income tax self-assessment uh, and some other bits as well. So in the summer, the uh, government announced that we would be mandating income tax self-assessment into MTD from April 2023. Uh, we also announced the extension of VAT uh, to all VAT registered businesses coming in from April 2022, and we also announced that we were uh, opening up the consultation in relation to corporation tax uh, as to how we will bring that into MTD as well. So there is currently a very small 
self-assessment pilot that's been running for uh, a couple of years. Uh, you may know that we, we did plan to put in self-assessment first on MTD, uh, but during the consultation, uh, we listened to businesses and we moved to VAT. So VAT went first in April 2019. Uh, and we are now ready to expand that into self-assessment. So we have a big IT release uh, going out uh, oh, this weekend, actually, um, which will increase the range of functionality that's available. And there's another big release in April, uh, which will probably see about 60-70% uh, of customers eligible to go on to the pilot should they wish. Now, COVID has had a very significant impact on us uh, in regards to the pilot. Uh, businesses who have received a COVID support grant of any form uh, are not eligible to join the pilot. And to be absolutely honest with you, that's because when we designed it many moons ago, uh, we had no concept that this would be in place. So we don't actually have a pathway for that income uh, to be able to come into uh, the pilot at this time. So fingers crossed, not just for MTD, but for the benefit of uh, the health and well-being of, of, of the nation, we hope that there will be no COVID grants uh, going forward after uh, March this year, because that means that we're on the road to recovery. If it does, then we will have to look at making contingency plans to be able to test the functionality of the uh, software that we have released uh, and the APIs for self-assessment. Uh, so we have a busy time coming up over the next uh, few months and few years. Um, corporation tax, uh, just to say that the uh, consultation is live now. Uh, it's probably got another 10 weeks to go, I think. Uh, and if you want to get involved with that, then please, by all means, go on to gov.uk and look and see if you can get onto a session or feed in your views electronically. Uh, the consultation document does say that we don't expect a uh, mandation for corporation tax before 2026, but we will look to have a pilot uh, probably uh, two years out. Uh, so, on the immediate future, um, the MTD and self assessment uh, and VAT changes coming in. Uh, if we can just go to the next slide, Jamie, please. Uh, so, in total, the changes for uh, VAT and its customers uh, in the next round of MTD will affect 4.7 million businesses, including 1.3 million landlords, 3.4 million non-VAT registered self-employed sole traders or landlords with a turnover between 10,000 and 85,000 uh, who would be required to use MTD for uh, self-assessment. Uh, 1.37 million VAT registered businesses in total will be coming in to MTD. Uh, that's uh, 650,000 uh, who are below the threshold uh, and they are mandated from April 22 and 430,000 who are mandated already uh, but they also have uh, a self-assessment income above 10,000 so they would be required to use MTD for self-assessment as well. And then uh, last slide um, MTD is designed to deliver a wide range of benefits for HMRC and the taxpayer. Uh, we believe that certainly for HMRC, uh, it brings in more tax revenue through the reduction of keying or transpositional errors. Now, some people uh, are dubious uh, about this, but we have done the research and the evidence clearly shows that there are billions of pounds uh, underpaid, underdeclared each year because of simple transposition. So when people have been keying in uh, from one system to another, they've done the calculations on paper or whatever, and then they're keying it in uh, to their software or into the government gateway. Uh, if you are supposed to be declaring 96543 
and somehow you type in 86943 or 543, then your uh, tax liability drops. Uh, and that means that eventually we'll see that uh, and it may be we come to you and say in your June 2018 return, uh, we believe it was erroneous. Uh, can you please check and make sure and uh, uh, rectify it? And that takes hours and hours uh, of time to do that for uh, accountants uh, or for the clients directly to look through the records to find out uh, that an error of perhaps a few hundred or a few thousand pounds has been made it's by a simple miskey uh, and by having no manual intervention uh, in the processing we hope to eradicate that uh, benefit for taxpayers um, mtd or any change wasn't popularly received um, we have to accept that but equally um, as it has been deployed, we've had a lot of feedback from uh, accountants and from businesses to say that even though they felt that they were pushed into it, uh, they have seen the benefits uh, of digital record keeping, of uh, digital submission, the enhanced use of software products for their businesses uh, that they hadn't taken the opportunity to review and consider uh, and that now they see significant productivity gains in terms of time, uh, time not spent dealing with paperwork uh, and invoices, and they are able to use that time in enhancing their business, making new contacts, getting new contracts, uh, and the, the catalyst for increasing their digitization. So uh, we are in a, a vastly uh, more advanced technological space now, um, COVID has also proven to be a big uh, precursor for improving our technology and many businesses have been doing that, which is uh, a good thing to see. So VAT started for MTD in April 2029. Uh, digital links for VAT uh, were due April 2020, but we deferred it by a year. So they will be required to be in place uh, this uh, coming April, April 21. Uh, as a part of the roadmap towards uh, getting everyone onto MTD, uh, we have announced that the VAT filing via the XML channel will cease in April 2021. Uh, and we will be doing that as a result of the 50-year-old VAT mainframe is uh, past its best. It is being decommissioned uh, and uh, all our records are moving on to the enterprise tax management platform. So if your business has signed up to Making Tax Digital, your records have already been transferred uh, they're all sitting there in ETMP and functioning correctly. Um, so that uh, one million businesses who are yet to sign up to MTD, their records remain in the VAT mainframe and we need to move them to ETMP and it is not compatible with XML. Uh, in fairness, uh, XML is a small percentage, a very small percentage of the submissions that we receive um, and it's a declining population. So we have written to the software providers to advise them that it is being withdrawn. Uh, we hope they have shared that message with customers directly who are affected. Uh, we also have a letter to go out to the businesses directly to advise them that from April onwards, they will have to find an alternative means of submission. Uh, and just as an example, uh, I actually did the research for this in the summer, and we had 72,000 customers submitting through XML products. We refreshed that uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, ready for the letters to be prepared to go out to the businesses and it's down to 68,000. So there is some movement already, uh, decreasing use of that particular uh, channel, um, but it is important to them. It is really important that they are aware of the change and that they are able to take suitable action 
so that they can continue to file beyond April. Um, direct debit uh, aligned with the change to the VAT mainframe. Uh, we have uh, a potential implication for direct debit customers. So those customers who are in the VAT mainframe with an existing direct debit, we quite happily uh, call for the money. Uh, but once we shift those records on to ETMP, banking regulations uh, tell us that uh, effectively that is a new direct debit because we've changed something. Uh, and direct debit, uh, the banking regulations say that we must advise customers uh, how much we're going to be taking uh, and when. Now, the only way that we can do that to meet those timeframes uh, is by email. So uh, that filing deadline is the 7th of the month. Uh, we would then uh, process and probably on the 8th or 9th, we would send out the uh, call for the direct debits to be taken. The banks have five days to be able to do that. So we're looking at 12th, 13th uh, by that action. So from the 7th to the 12th is our window to advise customers of how much we're going to be taking uh, and there's just simply no way we could generate those letters and get them posted and guarantee that they would be there by that date. So therefore we have to use email. So if a business on direct debit does not have a valid email address with us, uh, then we are saying please make sure that that is in place before April, before we migrate your data, uh, and that way we'll be able to continue to take payment by direct debit. There is a distinct possibility that if we don't have that valid email address, then we will not be able to take your VAT payment by direct debit. So again, uh, there are letters going out to those businesses affected, uh, and it should be a relatively straightforward issue of just advising us of the email address, which they can notify through their business tax account. Uh, so just to finish then, um, VAT uh, businesses below the threshold coming into MTD from April 2022, self-assessment from 23, and corporation tax not before 26, uh, but we would be looking to pilot two years out. Uh, and that it gives you a very quick uh, update of where we are with MTD. Thank you, Lenny. Um, just uh, monitoring some of the questions that are coming in. Uh, there's definitely a, a couple that perhaps are on a common theme that are related to your slides. So before we get into the main question and answer session at the end, perhaps we could just go through a couple of those, seeing as they specifically relate to, to that slide that you're on. Um, yeah. So we've got a couple of questions on on what XML is and what that channel is, uh, and um, as as obviously most of the audience uh, indicated in the poll, most uh, non MTD VAT returns are being submitted through the government gateway. So I suppose the main question is what what, what will be the option uh, if someone wants to continue using the government gateway or the HMRC website post 8th of April 21. Uh, cool, uh, that's a, a fair question. Uh, so XML is extensible markup language. It's a, a software product uh, that is is, um, is is used behind many, uh, I think there's 60 products using XML to submit to us. Um, so in terms of the government gateway, uh, businesses who are mandated from April 2022 uh, they obviously have the right not to join MTD should they uh, have a reason not to. So they would be able to submit uh, through their business tax account. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, it's the same process as the government gateway. Uh, it's just that behind the scenes, uh, we will be taking it down a different route. So businesses uh, will still have the opportunity to submit uh, via their business tax account uh, with something that's very familiar to them. They can choose to uh, adopt a software product to do it, 
uh, in which case we would probably suggest that that would be an MTD product. Uh, but to be able to do that, they would need to sign up to MTD, but that's their choice. So there will still be the opportunity for businesses to submit uh, through their business tax account. Thanks, Lenny. That nicely segues into into my my next slides here, where we're really talking about, I guess, what those two potential viable options are for those, um, yeah, those uh, uh, those clients who are not mandated into MTD until April 2022. Um, so yeah, we kind of can see it being boiled down to a couple of options here, as as, as Lenny was kind of explaining. Um, and I, I believe there is intention to contact all that all kind of customers to inform them if that change is that right is that still yes so we have we have informed the software companies and yep. we encourage them to notify their customers accordingly but we have an obligation to deal direct with our taxpayers so yep. that's the 68,000 uh, we refreshed the data 10 days ago 68,000 and those letters are being prepared uh, to notify those businesses that they currently file via an XML product and, and that won't be viable beyond April next year. Yep, got it. No, that, that makes sense. So, yeah, so using a business tax account, you know, will enable delaying event, the MTD adoption if they wish. Um, and I guess the adoption of digital records further, if that helps some clients. But yeah, if you're currently using um, the government gateway, there will be a, a like for like replacement, as I understand it effectively. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, the, the, the interface will look slightly different, but the principles will be the same uh, and it will be through their business tax account. Um, yeah. And again, we, we do want to ensure that businesses are not disrupted beyond uh, the, the bare minimum. But uh, as you say, uh, there is the opportunity for businesses to get prepared and be yep. ready early uh, in comparison to the, to the 2022 mandation. Uh, and if they choose to go into MTD, then all well and good. Yeah, perfect. And, and that's, that's really what we'd like to discuss next. I mean, I think getting ready early, improving customer record keeping and saving time, you know, both for yourself as an accountant, but also hopefully for your clients as well. I think uh, could could certainly be prudent uh, over the next 12 months because clearly the roadmap as you've as you've laid it out today you know means that it's it's still not too far away uh, mandation for those 72 odd thousand businesses so um, yeah those accountants out there who are still maintaining uh, you know perhaps more manual records for those clients and delaying that adoption perhaps it is a good opportunity to uh, to start using. Um, commercial software like TaxCalc's MTD VAT filer um, or, or something, um, you know, uh, dedicated like a cloud, cloud accounting system. Um, so, yeah, I, I suppose there's there's perhaps then two approaches. So if you've got clients who are perhaps um, still using spreadsheet records and perhaps you'd like to start or continue maintaining those kind of spreadsheet records, then a bridging tool such as TaxCalc's MTD VAT filer could still be um, you know a useful option so uh yeah that will that will enable you to con continue using those kind of more manual records or spreadsheet records which are still digital records but then import those into an mtd vat filer so yeah TaxCalc um, has had an mtd vat filer for for a number of years now um in preparation for uh, the main go live date which was was it 2019 now i think wasn't it gosh it seems so long ago yeah, April 2019 was when we launched, uh, yeah. and and again, you know, it's it's like we look at the dates of 22, 23. It yep. seemed so far away, but uh, I know it's a cliche, but time does fly, and it's making those preparations early uh, yep. so that things don't come up as a rush later on. So yes, um, uh, just a slide we've put together on maybe how to prepare for that and think about that. Um, yeah, firstly, sh schedule some time in now to analyze your client base. Um, I've put February, March there, but uh, as, as my colleague Ben pointed out when we were preparing for this session, of course, that, that April submission that you'll be making, um, you know, just before the, uh, the XML route switches off, will, of course, be for the, the January, February, March quarter. So you may actually want to start making changes now and start thinking about, you know, digitizing the the client records that you uh, 
that you are currently uh, working with your clients on. So yeah, it might be even time to start thinking about some of your clients even sooner than February, March. But of course, we've I know many of you will be working hard towards your self-assessment deadlines at the moment. So yeah, just a couple of um, bullets on uh, on what you might want to do. So analyze your VAT client base, how many currently submit non-MTD at the moment, check their source records and the potential adoption for MTD. Have you got any of them that you think might be a little bit more technologically uh, you know, capable and using more digital software with, with them? Perhaps you want to send some communication yourself. Of course, we've heard that HMRC will be doing some of that, um, but perhaps you, you want to do some of that yourself as you work with that business more closely. Um, want to show that you are uh, as engaged with, with the changes that are coming up um, to kind of demonstrate your, your credibility is keeping on top of that. And then if you want to, um, and if, if you think it's prudent to kind of get ahead of the curve of April 2022, you know, register those clients into MTD now so you can continue using commercial software uh, going forwards. And um, may, maybe Lenny, a quick question, how, how, how would a, an agent or a business go about doing that, that registration if, if they're not already? Uh, what's that process look like? I'm sure, I'm sure most have done it. Um, yeah, so if you want to sign up to MTD, then uh, if you go to gov.uk, uh, sign up to Making Tax Digital, the process is there. It's a relatively straightforward and simple process to follow. Uh, if um, an accountant, an agent wants to sign up their client, uh, then absolutely fine, they can do that. Uh, your clients would be uh, in your agent service account. You need to migrate them across from your government gateway account. That process is clearly laid out in gov.uk as well. Uh, you're effectively saying that's what we want to do. Uh, an email will be sent to your client to say, um, Joe Blogs Accounting has asked to do this. Are you okay with all of that? And they provide the authorization to say yes, and then we're good to, to go. Great, thank you. So we've um, just got a couple of minutes now, uh, uh, kind of this point to um, look at the MTD VAT file if you've not seen it before. Uh, we thought it'd be useful just to show that process if you haven't used it. So. Um, what I'll do is just switch into the tax account product and give you a quick flavour of how that works. So yeah, it will just sit on your launcher here on your dashboard, and is accessed a bit like uh, any other of our, you know, any other of our other products like tax, picking which client you then want to work on. And what you'll need to make sure kind of happens in the client record now is that the MTD. Uh, button or uh, flag is ticked so that it will uh, open up uh, effectively the ability to fetch. So that's one benefit of perhaps going into MTD rather than using the XML route is that we can also uh, pull in a little bit more data such as what your uh, open and fulfilled uh, VAT quarters are. So it will give you access and visibility over what these are. And so you can see that, uh, yeah, the test data we've got is a little bit out of date, but it it, uh, it works the same way and that you can see which uh, quarter has been fulfilled and even the date that it was completed uh, and also the VAT period, which is which is open. So it will give you some nice tracking of which ones are open and closed. Uh, of course, TaxScout makes it very clear that you're submitting under an MTD channel and uh, uh, to be honest, the VAT filer when you know via the XML channel is is largely the same, except you won't see the references to MTD there. But also, uh, you can type in the boxes, so that's uh, that's what has to change to be digitally linked to the source records. You can't just type in these boxes, so you can see we've locked them as as expected. But we give you the ability to import that from a source spreadsheet, so that's that's the main import route. Um, so if you're using some sort of desktop accounting system that's not MTD ready, some sort of legacy, you know, bookkeeping product, there should be some sort of spreadsheet export uh, into a similar format to this. So perhaps you can adapt that sort of layout and import that. Or, of course, if you've got your own tabs and records uh, in your own customized spreadsheet, then make sure that you create some sort of front sheet or, or finalized sheet of what the um, 
you know, one to nine boxes and the totals will be, and we can simply bring those in and allow you to form an MTZ submission for uh, completion. Uh, you can add adjustments. It will then show you a summary of those adju adjustments. You can attach anything to that VAT quarter submission, and then you get some nice reports here before you actually finalize and check and finish the return before sending. So yeah, that's that's a quick glimpse. Um, I, I do kind of want us to focus on the on the Q and A really. So just looking at the time, we will um, leave it there. But if you've got any questions or you'd like a you know more information, then please just contact the Tax Scout sales team, who will be more than happy to run you through the options there. So we're going to launch our final poll for today. So let me go into that slide there. And this is really a question on. Um, the roadmap a little bit further down the line, but based on the information you've heard today and based on, I guess, your plans, when do you intend to adopt MTD for it? So that's income tax self-assessment. So, yeah, you've got the opportunity to join an early pilot. So uh, software developers like TaxCalc are working hard to get uh, a viable proof of concept pilot available for April 2021, which we're working on. Uh, you may then want to you know, delay that a year, but still um, perhaps test it out a year before it goes live. So April 2022 will be that date. And then, of course, um, based on the roadmap suggest suggested there, we will looking to be go live April 2023. Um, but if you haven't thought about that yet, not, not a problem. Just put, I'm not sure it uh, it's not too far away, but perhaps uh, a little bit far away enough for us to uh, not be worrying about that just at the moment um, but yeah we'd appreciate your answers so please leave it open for just 10 more seconds or so when do you intend to adopt mtd for income tax self-assessment we'd like to hear your answers so please uh, use the poll on screen and i think we're just about good there oh no numbers are still jumping around just leave it a few more seconds just to gather the data we'd find that really useful in the tax Cal product team certainly uh, might be useful for you as well, Lenny. I'm happy to send the data to you uh, once it's completed and we'll close it there. So let me share the results to screen. And it's just coming up now. So, yeah, majority of, of the audience today, not too sure, which I think could be understandable. Perhaps your, your head is not in the right place to be thinking about that at the moment with the current self-assessment window still firmly in play. Um, but yeah, interesting to see um, yeah the results there. So um, not too many in favour of early adopting as soon as 2021. Um, but yeah, there, there looks like there could be opportunity for for some keen tax scout customers to try that uh, later this year. Uh, sorry, later in 2021. So please watch out for that. Um, and then of course, um, 2022 would still be slightly ahead of schedule, but. Um, then April 2023 will be the, the main kickoff point there. So thanks for your answers. Uh, anything you'd like to comment on there, Lenny? Any 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 response to that? Yeah, I, I don't think it's um, much of a surprise, to be honest. Um, it's a case of April 23 is uh, mandation. Uh, a lot of people will wait as long as they possibly can. Um, April 22, uh, we would be going into full public beta uh, pilot um, and ideally we'd be looking for <clears throat> tens of thousands of, of businesses to be in that pilot just so that we can test uh, our software, our processes uh, internally in HMRC but it's as important to software developers to get their processes and their software uh, checked out in live as well. <clears throat> just to say if anyone does join the pilot, uh, then we will ensure that they are not at detriment, uh, heaven forbid something goes wrong uh, uh, with your submission. Uh, we know that we've been doing that with you, with your software provider, uh, and uh, there would be no detriment, so there'd be no penalty, no anything like that. And of course, we would work with the software provider to make sure everything is put back into place uh, as it needs to be. So it's almost uh, a risk-free uh, trial uh, of the software for clients. Yeah, thank you. No, that, uh, that makes sense. So without further ado, I think this is uh, certainly what uh, many 
our uh, attendees have been waiting for today based on the number of questions already submitted through the control panel. We will go into a time of Q&A. We have hit the hour mark on the webinar, so I hope it will be okay just for five, 10 minutes or so of additional questions. And um, so we appreciate that uh, many of you have stuck around to the end, so we would like to, uh, to get through some of those. Um, my colleague Ben has been uh, yeah, trying to answer some of them in, in the chat box as well. Um, but let's just have a quick look. Um, Lenny, is there anything you can see there in the list that you think um, you'd like to answer or um, highlight initially? Um, I mean, again, I will make the um, commitment that the Q&A log, uh, I will download that at the end of the session and I'll uh, get answers for as many of those as we possibly can. I don't think we're going to answer them all today. Uh, yep. And then I'll send that back to you, Jamie, and you can send them yep. out to your uh, attendees and clients. Uh, I'll, I will, forgive me, I'll, I'll just randomly jump around. Uh, so someone was asking what ETMP was. That's the Enterprise Tax Management Platform. That's our, our new back-end system. Um, I see one that says HMRC get the email address when someone registers for MTD. Uh, can't you use that one? Uh, yes, we can, but banking regulations say that we need to have that uh, validated and assured at the point that we're changing over. So from January to March, uh, we would just need to verify that uh, equally. Uh, I would have to say that <clears throat> sometimes uh, the agent has put their email address in um, uh, for the client and uh, that wouldn't necessarily be the best thing to do for uh, a direct debit verification. Uh, <clears throat> why is it difficult for agents to set up a direct debit on behalf of clients? Um, that's because Banking regulations say that only a signatory to the account uh, can create the direct debit. So I know that we did previously allow uh, agents to set up direct debits on behalf of their clients, uh, but we've had to withdraw that facility uh, as a result of the change to the banking regulations. Uh, are we still able to prepare the returns on spreadsheets and then use bridging software? Yes, of course you can. <clears throat> we were very, very clear that um, spreadsheets are widely used by businesses and by accountants. Uh, it's uh, one of the biggest tools used and it's a case of we can make the technology do that for us. So spreadsheets, absolutely fine. Bridging software, which is relatively low cost, uh, that can take the information from your spreadsheet, send it to HMRC, uh, it meets our MTD requirements, and that's absolutely fine. So yes, of course, that can continue in the future. Uh, and again, just dive down the page somewhere. Yeah, there's a couple uh, of questions on the, um, on the income tax self-assessment uh, threshold being £10,000 uh, turnover. Do you want to just perhaps pick up on yeah. that. So uh, income tax self-assessment, uh, the 10,000 figure is turnover. It's not profit, it's not income, and it's also a case of if you have a property, if you're a landlord and you have um, a self-employed job as well, then it's the combination of those. So it's you're the taxpayer, uh, and it's the 10,000 that relates to you as a taxpayer. So if you're getting uh, 9,000 from being a landlord and 9,000 from uh, doing a, a self-employed job, then the combination of that would take you above the 10,000. Uh, and again, Jamie, if you see anything, just feel free to shout out and I'll do my very best for you. Sure, thank you. I oh, suppose yeah, that... one, one question <laughs> in response just... to that. I'm just I'm just jumped and I've said why has my question not been answered? Um, oh. So Amanda, uh, it's nothing personal. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I I will go through the log at the end question. and I will. 
yeah and again it's it's if it's not been answered um we we just we're not avoiding it we just haven't got round to them but we'll do it anyway <clears throat> I suppose one quick question off the back of that 10,000 threshold. Uh, why isn't that in line with the personal allowance? So I'm sure you've been asked that before. Um, I have, and if I'm absolutely honest, um, I'm not sure. Uh, other than uh, when we consulted for uh, self-assessment, uh, the personal allowance was probably ten thousand pounds so it's not been updated since that consultation because that was the the basis on which it went forward <clears throat> but i'm fairly sure that it will be looked at it's something that uh my own personal opinion it it doesn't make sense uh it should be uh linked to the personal allowance although having said that uh, at ten thousand pounds uh, compared to is it 12 and a half now mm -hmm. um, yep. it could take uh, a few more businesses out of MTD uh, small businesses um, so that could be beneficial to them but it, it is something that's often highlighted and uh, we will be uh, looking to get uh, a, a definite answer uh, for that in the very near future from the Treasury. And a question here, can you still file via the agent tax account? I presume that's in re reference to the VAT filer uh, section earlier on. Uh, yeah, should be, should be. Uh, and again, uh, I can see the <clears throat> HMRC IT systems are struggling badly now. Um, why do they think they will be able to cope with a much higher volume uh, and that is partly the reason for the new enterprise tax management platform which is stress tested to make sure that it can take a much much higher volume than the uh, VAT mainframe could do uh, so we are very confident that that will be in place and be very resilient for the next 25 years or so. Um, someone else is asking about what will happen to all the historical information on the old VAT platform. Uh, records will be moved from the VAT mainframe onto the enterprise tax management platform so the six years plus one will still be available uh, there as well. Uh, someone asking is the plan with self-assessment and corporation tax MTD for clients to pay tax more frequently or just reporting? Really good question. Um, so self-assessment, uh, it is uh, quarterly updates that are required uh, and that uh, will allow a tax forecast to be given, but there is no change to the payment dates. Uh, so there's no suggestion that for uh, it's a you, for for self-assessment that you'll make a quarterly return. It's not a return. Uh, there's still the return at the end of the year because if you <clears throat> excuse me, if you have your first quarter uh, April to June, uh, it may be that you have some seasonal activity so that. Uh, you've got more uh, income in quarter one than you have in quarter four. So over the course of the year, that will balance out. You may have adjustments to make. Uh, and again, you do that after the year end. So it's the change is digitalization, digital records, submitting via software. Uh, the quarterly updates allow a, uh, a reasonable tax estimate to be confirmed. Uh, for people. I, I know it is, is strange, but uh, we get lots of uh, stories about uh, self-assessment clients coming to their accountant in January, box of receipts, uh, or coming in and saying, what's the damage? I, I think it's about two and a half thousand, and, and they're told it's seven thousand. Uh, then that surprise shouldn't happen because they'll be able to see an estimate as they go through the year. Uh, there's another question uh, on self-assessment. <clears throat> uh, 
the 10,000, is this based on the prior year results as the current year may be unknown? Absolutely, so as is the case at the moment, uh, self-assessment effectively works a year behind. Uh, that's not changing either. So in year, it, that would be really difficult to do. So again, it's a case of you will be doing the previous tax year and having it done, uh, all done and dusted by the following uh, January. Um, after COVID-19, there will be a drastic reduction of businesses. What is the purpose of MTD? Uh, well, clearly we hope that there isn't a drastic reduction of businesses. There will be uh, a levelling, that's absolutely sure. Um, the, the purpose of MTD, as we explained earlier, is it's modernising it, it's making it more streamlined, it's making it more efficient. Uh, Digitalisation is very much the way of the world. We all uh, shop online, we all have online banking, etc. This is just a progression of that. Uh, digital record keeping, uh, certainly for example, the, the self-employed customer. <clears throat> I would be very impressed if every self-employed customer had every receipt for everything that they're entitled to claim. If they don't have that evidence, then they shouldn't be reclaiming it. But of course, if it's digitized, then they would have it. So it's actually helping to ensure that self-employed customers get the full benefit of the expenditure that they've made for their business. Um, uh, and oh, I'm still a bit confused. Oh, we don't want people confused. If a client is VAT registered but under 85,000, can they continue using the existing gateway to April 22, and until then continue you with manual records? So. <clears throat> Whenever they decide to join MTD, they will have to have digital records. So, mandation isn't until April 22. This is not uh, HMRC having some backdoor mecha mechanism of getting people in. Uh, that's not true at all. They have the legal right until April 22 to continue as they are. Uh, it wouldn't be through the government gateway, it would be through their business tax account that they would be submitting their VAT returns in that period. Uh, let's have a look. Ooh. Digital scan every invoice is very time consuming. What's your suggestion? <clears throat> um, there are many ways in which a uh, Digitization of records can be done. Uh, and again, I would encourage uh, accountants and businesses to look at VAT notice 700 slash 22. Uh, if you go onto the gov.uk website, put in VAT notice 700 slash 22, it'll pop up. And in there um, is a vast amount of information, valuable information about what has to be kept as a digital record. Uh, and also what digital links are. And people may be surprised what we will accept as digital links. Uh, so it may not be as difficult as some people uh, may believe it is. Mm -hmm. Do please look at VAT Notice 700 slash 22 and um, you may find a solution that is very beneficial to you. Uh, but yeah, you could digitally scan, you could photograph, there is software packages that will do it all for you. Uh, you could keep it uh, in a spreadsheet. Um, if, if you are keeping, if you're generating invoices in Excel or in Microsoft Word, then, uh, or other packages, then that, is a digital record, so you don't have to print it off. You just need to store that electronically, uh, and that would be your digital record. So there's no point printing it off and then rescanning it. If it's been created digitally, you could store and retain that digitally. Uh, da, 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 da. How is HMRC going to ensure that all this digital data is kept safe and this speed up HMRC response times? Um, 
Customer data is very, very important to us and we have the most stringent security uh, in terms of our firewalls uh, and so that we don't get hacked and there is no intrusion. Uh, our, our colleagues internally are all trained to make sure that we handle customer data correctly and it's not disclosed to anyone who shouldn't have it. Um, so for example, I have no business need to look at anyone's VAT records, so I do not have access to the VAT mainframe or ETMP for that basis. Um, and will it speed up response times? I'm not quite sure what response time um, James is, is looking at. In terms of responding to repayments, uh, that time is, uh, is, is, is maintained because that's one of our key objectives to make sure that customers who, shan't, who should have money back from us gets it uh, on time. In terms of response times to correspondence uh, or in calling the VAT helpline, that is very much unfortunately uh, a peak and a trough. Um, we are very busy. Uh, at certain times of the month and certain times of the year. So it's self-assessment peak uh, now. Um, so we have additional colleagues moving off uh, excise helplines, moving off tax credit helplines to assist on uh, self-assessment between now and uh, the start of February. Uh, and uh, like any business, um, we would love to be able to answer all our calls uh, within 30 seconds, but if we are getting uh, thousands of calls a day, uh, then it's impossible to do that without having a massive staff resource, and we wouldn't be able to staff uh, our call centers to that extent, because equally whilst there are busy times, there are lots of times when it's not busy uh, and uh, the response time is 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 pretty good, uh, well under a minute um, at the moment. I saw a figure on Friday that our response time was five minutes, which we think is very high uh, and uh, we try to take measures to prevent that. So a lot of it is available self-service on gov.uk. Um, we also put messages on the IVR, the interactive voice uh, system that says, if you are calling us about this, uh, then we already know and here is the answer. Uh, but yeah, customer service response times is, is a big thing for us and many other businesses. Uh, hey, oh, Enya. It's just Go gone ahead. 11. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Is there anything else you want to uh, finish with? Any other questions? Um, yeah, I would just thank you for the opportunity. I would thank your uh, attendees for all their questions. Uh, some of them were uh, complimentary, which is great. Um, some of them are less complimentary, fully understand that. We don't take it personally, but I will do my very best. Uh, so I'm literally going into file, save question log, uh, and I'm gonna save that question log now and I'll, over the next few days, I'll try and get as many answers uh, done and get back to you, Jamie, uh, hopefully uh, by Monday. Thank you, Lenny. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, fully appreciate your time again, especially at short notice again. Um, and uh, I think that's been extremely informative and helpful for for not only us, but our, our customers and partners there as well. So uh, yeah, massive, massive thank you uh, as well. Uh, obviously, it's a big topic. We can't cover every specific situation and query um, uh, in, in the hour. But uh, as Lenny says, we will do our best to uh, to download questions, get back to you, um, and hopefully uh, demystify um, you know some of the queries that some of you might be having. So thank you for the attendance, and um, I guess for general questions going forward um, about you know slides and content and recording and everything like that. Um, we're, we're quite, um, we're yet to decide exactly what um, what format we'll, we'll kind of send and disseminate the slides and the, the recording. But um, yeah, we do have a mechanism to do that as we've got all of your registrations and contact details. So we'll be looking for a way to do that as soon as possible. Um, the recording it's likely will we'll upload to some sort of web platform so you can watch that on demand uh, at some point. Um, and then the slides, yeah, we should, we should be able to get you a copy of those if you contact sales at taxcalc.com and request the slides specifically, um, then we will try and get a copy of those to you. 
uh, as, as soon as we can. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, just the final slide is a thank you, I think. Yep, so um, that's it for today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weeks and yeah, good luck to everyone out there for the self-assessment season. Um, if we don't speak to you in the meantime, have a fantastic Christmas and New Year and, and best of luck for January. Uh, thanks again, Lenny. No problem. Jamie, just before we go, um, there's just a few questions coming in about how they save the Q&A log. Uh, oh, great. So um, if the attendees can look at their toolbar, so there should be a box of things on the right hand side. And at the top, it says file. Uh, and if you open file, then there is uh, a tab that says save questions log. Uh, just click that and it should save to your desktop. Um, so again, yeah, the, the questions that we have answered, the answers will be there uh, and um, I'll make sure that we get as many done as we can for Monday. Brilliant. Can the attendees do that, can they? Uh, the attendees should be able to uh, download that Q&A now, um, but uh, what, what I... Uh, because I, I use GoToWebinar quite a lot, so I, yep. I'll get an Excel spreadsheet effectively of the questions yep. uh, and I'll fill in the boxes uh, and then I'll send that to you. And then everything we've answered today and everything I, I can get for Monday, uh, you can send out to all your attendees. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that's it for today and uh, have a great week. Cheers. Bye now. Bye.